Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do the impossible. I'm going to break down a pharmaceutical company for you, and I'm probably going to butcher this whole thing. But as mentioned in my past video, we're talking about AbbVie today, the pharmaceutical giant that's been on a terrific downtrend, literally like a terrific, terrific downtrend. We're talking about 50% from its all-time highs, paying a whopping 6.6% dividend yield with a PE of 17 and a $100 billion market cap suggested by you, promised by me, to take a look. So let's jump... <laughs> Right into this. Welcome back, my passive income investors alike. This is going to be a fascinating video because not only do I know nothing about pharmaceuticals, today I'm going to try and educate you guys and hopefully you guys can educate me as we take a deeper look into a mission to hijack cells. Our discovery scientists aim to unlock new hope for challenging diseases, see how they're doing, it, oh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of butchering this. Now, we all know AbbVie is one of these massive pharmaceutical conglomerates. And before we break down its fundamentals, I just want to take a quick screen through and take a look at some of the stuff they're doing because what is degraded, degradomer, degradomer, degradomer? I don't know what the hell that even means, guys. Um, but this is where there's going to be a lot of big words talking about little tiny things that we don't fully understand. It hopes they don't get sued by the, uh, the Health and Drug Administration and things work out in the long run because this company is involved in some sketchy, weird stuff. And usually they are. And can we please be reminded that pharmaceutical companies are very challenging to understand, especially when we're talking about companies like Valiant Pharmaceutical Stock. We'll see if I can get them to come up. Uh, if you guys don't remember Valiant, it was bought, uh, bought out by a company called um, um, a Persian Square Holdings by my friend Bill Ackman. And um, then it was bought out again because they sold it to this company, which is Bush Health Companies. And as we can see, uh, Valiant was a pharmaceutical company that, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, uh, that's in the past. Let's start moving forward here, guys. Um, so here we go. We're going to look into some of the stuff here and just see what's going on with this company. Um, so we're going to look at their strategy, some of their presentations. I'm not going to go over this website too much because I feel like the words are going to be over my head along with you guys. I don't know how many of you guys actually understand this stock. Um, pharmaceuticals are a tough, tough industry um, to fully understand and comprehend. So let's just scroll through this um, and see what we can't find that might be interesting. The pipeline, I feel like, is going to be important. Advanced medicines that demonstrate both strong clinical performance and strong economic value. Uh, highlights January 2029. Immunology is one of their biggest uh, drugs. They have a drug out um, that basically deals with the, uh, it's one of their blockbusters that has to deal with the immune deficiency disorders where your immune system kind of attacks your own body. And these seem to be some of their larger drug segments. Uh, and it's right here, Humirar. That's the one. Uh, this is the one that uh, seems to be the blockbuster for them and one of the ones they're trying to mitigate away from because it makes up a good majority of their sales. From my current understanding, and I don't think we're going to learn too much about it, but since humor is an anti-TNF monoclonal antibody that currently treats Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, all, I'm going to sound like an idiot. I'm going to stop reading these. These are complicated. Um, maybe we'll hop into the presentation. Actually, before I get into the presentation, let me just read some of the news here, guys. Um, so... Some of the big news that's affecting this is Allergan is unloading two drugs enough to sell FTC on AbbVie by uh, analysts aren't so sure. So let's read through this real quick. Allergan has confirmed it will hive off two drugs so that AbbVie's $63 billion takeover could offer pass um, U.S. antitrust uh, scrutiny, but recent regulatory decisions and indecisions on pharma deals has analysts worried whether that would be enough for this stock. As an investor Q&A published Tuesday, Allergan said it will um, sell Brazicamab and Zenpep um, as part of the, the merger process. So they're selling off drugs to buy some other drugs. And uh, that has to do, um, well, AbbVie's $63 billion Allergan buyout offer depends on the Botox growth, because I mean, Botox is the thing they're trying to get their hands on, which I mean would be a great drug to get a hold of. Let's be real, man. Botox is a popular thing these days. It's actually more popular than it's ever been. From my understanding, Abby will be formidable after acquiring Allergan. That's all anyone talks about, right? But I think this article sums a lot of it up. Um, Abby, A B B V Y or A B B V is an undervalued, and the company's plan to acquire Allergan uh, will provide both need to for diversification and a focus uh, use for the current torrent of free cash flow that AbbVie earns. Uh, more than half of AbbVie's sales come from Humor, the one drug we were just talking about, which is a blockbuster immune suppressive medication. Sorry, I might have 
you know, misquoted that. And it needs to diversify away from humor art. This is a sensible plan that will need diversification in multiple forms. Pharmaceutical and biotech companies are suffering due to the political rhetoric that fuels the uncertainty about pricing and many other key issues. AbbVie and Allergan are both profitable companies whose company's drug portfolio will achieve scale and diversification that either companies had before. AbbVie is likely to appreciate after the company's merger or their, when they merge and the market recognizes the probable ease which AbbVie pays for Allergan. Moreover, AbbVie's financing of this transaction will likely occur at much lower than anticipated interest rates. Sounds pretty good to me. Uh, AbbVie needs to diversify and Allergan does it. Uh, AbbVie had hoped to diversify into neurology, but its phase three trial of Daptux M phase three trial of Daptux M failed, and efficiencies destroyed the company's most um, hopeful path to organic diversification. So, God, oh my goodness, guys! I don't even know where to begin with how complicated this stuff is to uh, digest. I mean. This is like next level. Humor, here's the drug. Uh, humor is a drug that can relieve pain and reduce inflammation in people with a number of autoimmune diseases. So this is their bread and butter stock right here. Their bread and butter product, uh, as we can say, guys. Um, and it's a weird product that that, obviously a product I don't use. Um, before we look at their final presentation here, we can start getting into those things, guys. I just want to show you two different stocks. So... Uh, I like the way uh, Scotia I trade the account that I use kind of runs down the fundamentals. Now I want to compare two drug stocks here and just show you the drastic differences in the book valuations. So currently, AbbVie has a negative book value. Probably has to do with maybe this acquisition. Uh, cash flow, even though cash flows are positive, the the end book value is negative. But again, that could be doing to purchasing. When you purchase companies, sometimes you use debt and sometimes you show negative book value. At the same time, guys, we got a cash flow of 6.9 times. Uh, this is where I love to see operating margins and profit margins. Um, these are very, very important, which we can see are half decent to an extent. And the other most important thing is return on assets and equity. And I'm shocked that these are down as much as they are, but I'm, we're going to compare these to another company here in one sec. Uh, we got 30,000 employees, uh, 1.48 million uh, shares outstanding, um, which would be nice to see if they dilute these year over year. Dilution in shares really matter sometimes. Um, we got revenues of thirty-two point six billion. So this chart to me is very hard to understand. It's very confusing. And even if we go into their cash flows, um, we can see cash flows have been fairly stagnant uh, for net income. And um, it's just an interesting company, guys, because it all of this comes into the fundamentals of them buying and selling and trading these pharmaceuticals. So it's really hard to understand. But if we compare this to a company, let's say the one that I talk about all the time is Johnson and Johnson. Here we have a positive book value of 23, cash flow is a 1090. And the thing that I really like to look at, guys, is look at the operating margins, the profit margins, the return on assets, and oh my goodness, the return on equities. And I just want you to look at the positiveness of all of this. We have 135,000 employees, so we literally have like five times the amount of employees. We're talking five times the numbers. Um, debt to capital is really healthy at 31 point. Uh, 30% and I think debt to what was the debt on this one uh, debt to cap it's not even right because it's not a profitable company yet right like it's it's weird to me um, that um, you know let me I won't let me not get too too bad here yet I don't want to be too judgy because I might end up buying this based on your guys opinions but can we just admire the balance sheet here for a moment uh, the reason I don't like and this this is the thing that bothers me most about stocks when I'm looking to buy them is when we go into here guys when we look at total assets verse total liabilities what do we have well, it looks like the total assets sits under the total liabilities, which means if this company had to liquidate everything today, it would owe more than it has, which usually means it's a growth stock. So this clearly is a growth company in the pharmaceutical sector, and it is not a profitable one compared to a company like Johnson & Johnson. If we look at a Johnson & Johnson balance sheet, we're going to look at a company that has total assets of um, 152, what is that probably be in the billions, right? Or Yeah, it's definitely in the billions, 152 billion in assets versus liabilities, total liabilities of 93. So if this company liquidated everything, it'd have like 60 billion or so in assets. So I mean, you're talking about a really healthy good growth kind of company here with Johnson and Johnson and it's also in the pharmaceutical sector that's pressurized. So when I'm looking at a good company to buy Johnson and Johnson is the top of the list, but because you guys have suggested Abby so much, let's take a look at their presentation. Um, we're going to look at the 2019 presentation and break down what we can't learn about this company. And let me zoom in here to give you guys a better view. Um, and let's just start scrolling through and see what we can't learn. So we're gonna be looking at the forward-looking information, industry-leading growth supported by a portfolio of leading brands, of course, of course, of course. Strong financial executive science since inception as an independent uh, company. 
um, adjusted net revenues. So it looks like they've been growing revenues pretty healthily and they plan on growing a lot uh, approaching um, 2018, 2019 here, I guess. So let's keep scrolling through. Delivering outstanding shareholder value and return of cash. That would probably have to do with the dividend, which we're going to look into in a sec here as well. Um, but let's keep trolling through. Well positioned for sustained growth, um, expand and advance our pipelines. Yeah, obviously that's what they're trying to do. Um, is there anything that really pops out here though? Here's their main drug they talk about a lot, which contributes for $9 billion in incremental risk adjusted sales. By 2025, a next generation immunology. Oh, man, I wish I understood how any of this works. Uh, I don't understand one bit of this. Humira treats 1 million patients and 15 indications i don't know what that means either late stage assets 25 new molecules under investigation for immunology uh sounds very speculative to me oh my god why are pharmaceuticals so complicated building a market uh, leadership position in because uh, i mean johnson and johnson like some of their products make sense like listerine they have a lot of things like Tylenol and stuff too. I mean, but let's just keep going here, guys. Let's do our best. Let's do it. So you're really going to notice they're going to focus on the uh, the immune drug here. But AbbVie's portfolio has a potential to address 80% of uh, hematologic malignancies. Mark, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about here. Let's just keep going. AbbVie solid tumor discovery and development focus. So it looks like we're getting into tumor-based drugs, antibody drug conjunctions, protein Degree. This is why Warren Buffett says stick to what you know. Uh, neuroscience, virology, and target opportunities. Long-term vision focused on innovating approaches to protein misfolding. What the? But 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 what? Literally, protein misfolding. Can you explain that to me right now in the comment section below? Do you know this company well enough to understand what protein misfolding is? Neuroinflammation and proteostasis. Pro proteostasis for treating neurodegenerative disorders. <laughs> that was what they said they were failing on was the neurodegenerative diseases. I imagine that have to do with Alzheimer's maybe. Um, strategic partnerships to accelerate development. Uh, it looks like they've got a lot of partnerships going on here and acquisitions. These are the big acquisitions we're gonna be looking at. Um, what else we got? AbbVie, a unique investment opportunity with potential for continued strong shareholder uh, returns. I would bloody well hope so, but pharmaceuticals man they're iffy they're iffy so here we go reported gap earnings of 256 per share from 2013 all the way to 2018 like i said we haven't seen uh, really fluctuating a lot here in the net adjusting uh, revenues here so adjusted net revenues include other revenues of 81 million in 2014 40 million in 2015 78 million in 2016 20 million in 2018 and revenues primarily presents collaboration milestone revenues and prior um, period royalties. Um, wow, what a um, underwhelming um, forward-looking presentation, guys. So the last thing maybe what we'll do here is instead of looking at Valiant, we're going to go ABBV, dividend history. And let's just take a look at this company's dividend history, shall we? Um Something tells me this company is going to have a pretty volatile dividend history, but let's just take a look. And oh my goodness, it looks like a dividend growth stock. Um, so if we bought this in 2014, five years ago, we would have bought it for 40 cents on the dividend. And today our dividend would be, uh, wow, almost well over double that. Um, so this company, so if you bought this company in 2014, your dividend would have doubled by now. Um, so it means this company has been doing pretty well for growing its cash flows. I just wish its books could be positive. I really don't buying like I like buying I don't like buying negative debt companies. Uh, it scares me a little bit, but again, um, this is just me analyzing this for you guys. But man, what a growth company! Can you tell me where you've seen a dividend double in five over double in five years? Um, that's quite staggering. But we still see a little bit of volatility, but at least the volatility is to the upside, not so much the downside. Um, I don't a hundred percent understand this dividend yet for me to want to buy into it. But could you imagine buying it today at six point six percent and then getting like a fifteen percent five years from now? That would be pretty impressive um but this is abvi guys it's a very very weird stock i don't understand that well i'd love to let you guys tell me what you think about this company in the comments section below uh looking at their balance sheet it's very confusing to understand it's very very hard to understand how this company's cash flowing their books um i don't understand pharmaceuticals well enough so if i do purchase this it's gonna be on your suggestion not my own and maybe i'll buy a little bit but really if i'm comparing it guys johnson and johnson's a much more understandable company with a much better balance sheet with much more room for growth and uh, the ability to grow their dividend as well 
well. Obviously, we're not looking at the fastest growth company on the planet, but we're talking about safety and security here. And if you don't want growth, but you want the security, I still think Johnson & Johnson is going to be on my buy list here very soon. But I hope you guys enjoyed this quick breakdown. I don't think you learned any more than I did because I don't understand any of this company's stuff. I don't understand pharmaceuticals, so I can't help you guys there. Um, so let me know in the comment section below what you guys think, um, what I missed, what I should know. But stay cool. Stay awesome, guys. I look forward to chatting to you real soon.